This was your idea. No, it wasn't. It was. No, it wasn't. It was your idea. You always tell me that it's my idea, but it's never, it's, it's never been my idea to do it. It's always your idea. And you always have to just... Uh, Why do you always think you have to have the last word about this stuff? Because I do. It's important. Like, uh, Listen, th these people aren't... Oh my gosh, I can't believe we're doing this again. I just hate this kind of thing. No, you don't. Yes, I you do. Enjoy I it. do not you, enjoy it. I absolutely you always say that you hate it, but actually... <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That's pretty good. I really, yeah. There, there, no, it wasn't. There was a little bit, of a, was. <laughs> a little bit of a Monty Python thing happening there for a minute. An argument is a collective series of statements to establish a definite proposition. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It isn't. So what are we doing? Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to answer a viewer's question. How do we... Fight. <laughs> How do we resolve conflicts within our marriage and within our home? <laughs> and so we'll do our best. It's going to be a real <laughs> short video. <laughs> We leave them unresolved. <laughs> Conflict now. Yeah, nah. Um, so we're going to just speak from our hearts. We're obviously no experts, but we have been married almost 24 years. Which means we've resolved a fair bit of conflict. Yes. So, you know, yeah. give yourself some props. You're pretty good at it. Since you're yeah. the one having to put up with it. Oh. And I wanted to introduce it by... Um, with one of our favorite verses from Ecclesiastes, which talks about a cord of three strands being not easily broken. Mm -hmm. And when we think, it's, it's something we, mm -hmm. a, a verse that we've come back to many times, first in our courtship and then absolutely in our marriage. Our courtship? <laughs> yeah, see what I did there? Yeah, <laughs> it's just gonna be like riddled with dad jokes, I can just tell. But anyway, um, when you think of a cord of three strands, it's much stronger than a cord of two. And likewise, we like to think of our marriage as a triangle, or at least the relationship in our marriage, with um, Chris and me or whoever the couple is here and then God here. And when this relationship with God is happening, our personal relationship mm. with a higher power is happening, then the relationship with each other is a lot stronger. The other thing that um, has been a tremendous help to us is that we both grew up in homes with incredible role models of parents mm. who modeled conflict resolution for us in very healthy ways. Yeah. And we've had amazing mentors within and without our community. One of the things that we have maybe gotten better at over the years is realizing that it's not our job to change each mm -hmm. other. It's our job to love each other. Mm -hmm. I married my best friend and that means yeah. I need to keep every day celebrating the fact that we have this friendship and then nurturing that friendship. Mm -hmm. And you know, the old cliche joke about I'll alter him, you know, the, the bride yeah, trying to remember yeah. the sequence of the marriage <laughs> ceremony and, yeah. and, the, and the bridegroom being freaked out that, you know, she's going to spend her life trying to trying to change him. Yeah. I think, you know, when, when you're new in your marriage, you often, you discover things about each other that, eh, maybe that wasn't quite how I thought it was going to be, you know, that's, mm -hmm. you know, there's aspects of your personality that I mm -hmm. just hadn't come across until we're in close proximity yeah, with each other all sure. the time. <laughs> Um, but I think so a big part of what you and I try to do is make sure that we actually acknowledge the things that we do enjoy about each other yes. and the same with our kids so like you know if somebody in the family does something kind or sees mm -hmm. something that needs to be done goes out of their way to do it try to acknowledge that don't just don't just live with the assumption that mm -hmm. people will do this stuff just because yeah right don't take it for granted and the other the other part of that um, equation too is when we are doing things that honor and delight and um, show respect to another person then that kind of elevates the whole relationship to not being something where you're nitpicking about the things that you don't like about the person and so much of the little things in life that we don't like about somebody aren't here nor there I'm not talking about you know big dramas I'm just talking about the little things that can get on a nerve so if we don't let those fester and we do elevate uh, the other person through honoring them, that can alleviate a lot of pressure. And another thing I think we're learning is that when we're disagreeing, prayer is our first port of call, not our mm. last resort. And we used to think we can't take this to prayer until we've got it resolved. <laughs> yeah. But something very amazing happens when you're having a massive disagreement and you just take it before God and say, help us out here. Yeah. And it somehow, I don't know, it turns the negative energy from toward each other to here you go, God help us out and lifts it up. And I know that's 
Often it helps to it, see the humor in it. It actually. does. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah. if you if you take it to God, then like I think he helps us see that yeah. it's probably not such a big deal after all. Yeah. So maybe without meaning to, we've kind of started out by talking about way, ways that we avoid getting into conflict with each other. But obviously, as with any relationship, inevitably, we do end up having disagreeances. Um, I personally think most of ours stem from a breakdown in communication, and maybe that's obvious, but it's usually over relatively trivial stuff. Sorry, sweetheart. Um, it's always and, trivial. And always my failings. <laughs> <laughs> Mine do. Like, for example, I'm just a really, I, I love to plan ahead and I love to have yes, a full do. social calendar and I'm like, oh, on the weekend we can do this and so-and-so wants us to come over next weekend and what about, and you're much more, like you love to live much more in the moment. And Well, and you often choose mornings. <laughs> first thing in the day to tell me yeah. on Monday about what we're going to do on the weekend and it's yeah Whew. yeah it's a lot I know and I'm just like yay looking forward and you're just like I'm not even awake yet either that or it's just a strategy she knows that constant dripping will hollow this particular stone so you know just okay yes so dear. we we've learned we've learned to I think or we're learning because oh yeah yeah go on yeah we're learning to um yeah, respect those differences in each other. Yours that I love to have um, social times and you that you like, you need to ha carve out times when it's just... And, and during the busyness of yeah, each day, yeah. not to be ships passing, but to actually stop and say, hey, let's talk about you know, that idea that yeah. you had. Um, what would that look like? And you know, how's it gonna really work? And, and not, by the way, sorry, yeah. and by the way, we've got three other things planned that we'd kind of forgotten <laughs> to put in the yeah, scene. Yeah, and not talk about things that matter when you're doing other things and are busy. That's been really, really, that's... <laughs> that's <laughs> that's well, because I can't, I'm a man and I can't multitask. <laughs> you know? Speaking of good communication, I think one of the things that we've realized is often when we are getting upset with each other about little things, it has nothing to do with the little things, but often there's other stresses um, like grief in our life that we need to actually talk about. And when we take a moment and take time with our spouse and say, what's actually hurting? What's actually making you frustrated? Is there something else? Often there is something else. And- um, No, there isn't, there never is. <laughs> <laughs> it's always it's that always pile of dirty dishes, yeah, yeah. which so, I left. Yeah. <laughs> You're my best dishwasher. Well, I want to say on, on the good communication thing, too, that we've also, we, we, we work at not making sort of blanket negative statements mm -hmm. toward each other or toward our kids. You know, like, you always do this thing yeah. or you never do that. You know, yeah, yeah. Take, take that vocabulary out of it. Um, yeah. Often just saying, hey what's going on here makes me feel, feel that you know yeah. And, and yeah. just just good communication stuff like you do and you know yeah. most of us are good at doing that in our office environments in our workplaces and maybe we we sort of check that at the door when we when we come, come home, home yeah to the um, people that are we, actually the most yeah. precious to us and we take yeah. each other for granted and so we, we really try not to, not to do that and another thing that's been really helpful and once again it, this was modeled very strongly for us when we were kids at our in our own homes was uh not to allow negative speak about each other about ourselves about our children or about other people in our house yeah. as, a, as a, and that just cultivates um a spirit of grace within the household so that when somebody says something negative or our son says something negative about a classmate or a teacher or an event that's happening they will hear their mother say <laughs> he or she is a beloved child of god yeah well and which then, is true which is true and then we'll uh, give them tools to either confront the situation or deal with it um in their own strength not just let them download on on us and then say yeah you poor little guy you know terrible teacher or such an annoying classmate rather give them the tools and say listen we're here to back you up but you're a young man growing into the world you need to figure out how to do this conflict stuff yourself mm -hmm. so um and that's my parents did that for me i know your parents yeah. did that for you so allowing or cultivating a spirit of grace and graciousness and kindness in your house is really a good yeah. thing to work on we all have our moments but look each of us is human. Yeah. We, we're all we're all made of the same stuff, and so naturally uh, we have this, similar problems. But um, I think the main thing is, um, if you're fortunate enough to be in a relationship, to be married, work on that friendship element, right? I mean, 
like like we yeah. said at the beginning, you know, we married each other because we were best friends, and we try to stay best friends. Um, and don't let that slide. Yeah, and to start each day giving thanks for your relationship, yep. and that you have each other. And I think that attitude of thanksgiving then can permeate not just your day, but your whole marriage. And if you start every day like that, and ha even if even if you have to restart the day a few times in that spirit of thankfulness, it does make a really big difference to then the underlying yeah. conflict. Well, and to that point, you know, starting the day together in prayer and ending it in prayer is the foundation. Yeah, it gives it bookends. <laughs> yep, so there's our triangle. Yeah. So friends, those are just a few of the things that we've tried to implement in our marriage and in our home. It's the best work of our lives is to work through things and come back to our original love to each other. Yeah, and keep the small, yeah. the small grievances that we have in proportion um, and celebrate the things that, that we enjoy about each other and about our kids and, and, and speak words of kindness. And shower each other with small acts of love because yeah. those things just lift our souls and bring us back to who we want to be and where we belong. So how about you guys? Do you fight well? <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what works in your lives? Yeah. Let us know about your families, about your relationships, how you guys resolve the things that create tension, what are the things that stress you out, and uh, how do you talk it out? Um, be interested to know. We can have a little, uh, little fight match down in the, co in the in comments, comments section. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> okay, so you, you go for that. We're going to stay and finish our tea, um, but we send each of you our best regards. Talk again soon.